First, we want to say good afternoon to everyone, and we thank you for joining us this afternoon on this form of change, because I think all of us would agree that we're living in some change in times, and sometimes it's difficult for us to adapt to change. So this afternoon, we want to take a few moments of your time, and we have a wonderful person who will help us today um, just to learn how, give us tips on how to deal with change. So we're so glad that you um, decide to be a part of it tonight. We ask you to let others know um, if you have friends or family that's going through, and uh, we ask you to give them a call, text them, let them know um, that we want to do something in order that we might be able to help all of us deal with change. Tonight we have a young lady. First of all, I'm proud to say that she's a member of the Orange Grove Baptist Church. Her name is Tiffany Smith. Um, Tiffany has been a, been a member of our church for six years. She's a part of the youth ministry at Orange Grove. She's a volunteer teacher for the Awana program, and she's always in children's church, helping us in children's church. Um, Tiffany earned her Bachelor's of Science degree at James Madison University in Harrisonburg, Virginia, and her Master of Arts in Human Services with a concentration on military resilience counseling from Liberty University in Liberty in Lynchburg, Virginia. Uh, Ms. Smith, she's been a certified recreation therapist for almost 15 years, uh, working with active duty, ill, wounded, and injured service members at Walter Reed National Military Hospital in Washington, D.C. Uh, for doing combat years. In 2014, Ms. Smith relocated to the Durham Raleigh area, and she is currently employed at the Durham Veterans Affairs Healthcare System in Durham, North Carolina, as an outpatient recreation therapist and certified as an adaptive sports specialist for veterans with physical, mental, emotional, and cognitive disabilities. Under the Department of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation, veterans are ta taught how to improve their quality of life through therapeutic activities, adaptive sports, coping skills, and other interventions. So we are so honored to have uh, Ms. Tiffany Smith here with us tonight. And it is another honor to have her mother uh, with us tonight, mom, come to be with daughter to make sure that daughter say and do the right thing. So we are honored to have her here with us. So Tiffany, we thank you for your time, and we're going to turn it over to you and all the people who are watching you, and you tell us how to deal with change. All right. Thank you so much. Well, good evening, Orange Grove members and friends. I hope that you'll be able to learn something new from the presentation to make your life a little lighter and tolerable. We are in the middle of trying times where events and uncontrolled situation has occurred that would enforce change in order to survive, adapt, and thrive in today's society. Next slide. So, <laughs> I'll go over the learning ad objectives, and the title for tonight is How to Deal with Change in this Present Moment. So we're going to focus on the present time. So our learning objectives by the end of the presentation, the audience will be able to understand radical change and events that have occurred throughout history identify what zone and stage of change one is currently in, learn signs and symptoms of depression and stress that is triggered during change, learn different coping strategies that can be beneficial to yourself during the current change, increase knowledge about crisis lines and community resources that are available to the public during this pandemic, and finally, identify, implement, and execute coping strategies into your daily routine. So we're gonna start with the next slide, setting radical change. And in order to understand what radical change is, let's define it. Radical change is transformation or replacement of fundamental principles of social change, structural change, or radical reform. 
This affects political, economic, religious, and institutional framework when this occurs. Throughout history, radical change has occurred since the dawn of time. Here are a few examples de deprived from radical change. So I separated the columns into past biblical changes and modern day changes. The first radical change occurred with the sin of Adam and Eve in Genesis. Of course, God's original plan was to have Adam and Eve live in paradise and in peace. But due to the sin of eating from the tree of knowledge, radical change occurred and they found themselves propelled into defending themselves. Imagine how Adam and Eve felt when their sudden change occurred and they had to try to find a new way. Noah builds the ark is another radical change that has happened. Noah was responsible for starting the new generation as the first world ended by the flood. Picture yourself as the only family left on earth to restart socializ socialization, society, and the new way. The third, Moses frees Isra Israelites. No longer under Pharaoh and no longer slaves, what should have took days to turn into, turned into 40 years of wandering in the wilderness due to unbelief and disobedience to God. They even wanted to go back into slavery because they missed, quote unquote, the old way, due to fear and uncertainty of their change. Does that sound familiar? And of course, the birth and death of Jesus is one of the most radical changes on earth. This also occurred and had a different, a big effect on society and how the birth of Jesus entering and his death was detrimental to how humans are now able to have a strong relationship with God. Switching up to modern day changes, the abolishment of slavery was also a radical change in 1865. This was the attempt to free all slaves and create all men free. This happened during the 13th Amendment, but it took two other amendments, the 15th Amendment for women to vote and the 24th Amendment ruled by southern states from forcing poor voters to choose from paying unaffordable tax to vote. Radical change in making strides towards equality with many setbacks and rebuttal. This is also part of radical change. 1964, we experienced the end of Jim Crow laws to end segregation in America. Even this change was filled with riots and martyrs. Society has shown us many times fear and sudden change can cause chaos if not handled in a responsible and focused mindset. The attack on 9-11 20 years ago has changed the way the, the world travels. The attack on the U.S. soil by air propelled the world into a new systematic way of traveling. No longer is the days of someone casually walking in the airport is allowed. No longer can loved ones walk to the departing gate. Identification must be in hand in order to board the plane. You have different things that you cannot carry on, as well as laptops and electronics checked. Radical change happened, but it is but this was less of a protest because the fear of another attack allows society to be, to be okay with this particular radical change. This brings me to our current radical change. COVID-19 has arisen and still here. The virus was discovered slash reported overseas at the end of December, 2019. Fast forward, we are eight months into this. The unknown to human eyes, but God knows exactly what will occur. This leads us to the question, how will you deal with the current radical change? Resilience will play a vital role in this process. Resilience is when you have the ability to recover quickly from the difficulties and toughness of life. Next slide. So, Two common feelings during change is depression and stress. This is common because most people feel this way. There's other emotions that occur, but these are the main ones that affect most. Loss of interest or pleasure in hobbies. What you used to enjoy, you no longer find enjoyable. Excessive fatigue. You wake up tired. 
you go to sleep tired, you cannot get enough sleep, and you don't know why. Weight gain or weight loss is also a sign of emotional distress. Early awaken, excessive sleeping. Are you getting up in the middle of the night not knowing why? Are you excessively sleeping and continuously to sleep your life away? Agitation. Do you find yourself impatient and argumentative lately? Excessive crying. Excessive crying means daily, maybe even hourly. Sometimes you forget what you're even crying for. Lack of concentration. Do you find yourself going to work, not able to concentrate on your task? Are people calling you and you're not able to recall what was say, stated? These are also important signs to monitor. Social isolation. There's a difference between social distancing and social isolation. Social distancing is practicing physical distance of six feet away in a social setting. You are actively interacting with others while practicing safety precautions. Social isolation is when the person has a complete lack of contact between individuals in society. You purposefully avoid others. Mood swings, feelings of helplessness and sadness and empty feelings occur. You have lower self-esteem. You think of yourself less likely to succeed or even to get through this. Of course, the main thing is because I have a lot of consults, chronic aches and pains have elevated. This is associated with stress and depression. So if you had any of these symptoms pre-COVID, you may notice it has intensified since the pandemic. This is because emotional stress and physical stress is all connected. Your body works systematically together. And of course, the dreaded thoughts of suicide Next slide. So ask yourself this, what zone are you in right now? There are three types of zones, fear zone, learning zone, and the growth zone. During the first stage when this first came out, many people were already in the fear zone. And as you can see, the fear zone consists of things of, I stopped doing things that I enjoy. I'm always looking for someone to blame. Was you that person who blamed Trump, the Asians, the bats? Were you that person trying to figure out who did this to cause such a abrupt stop to our lives? Fear zone also caused I have trouble focusing on tasks and feeling unproductive and overwhelmed. At the time of this, a lot of people still had to go to work, including myself. And when the pandemic hit, majority of America was sealed in as I cranked my car up slowly and realized I was the only one pulling out the driveway. I too said, what's the point? You look at the end of the world and you always notice nobody's working during the end of the world. I have to go to work. <laughs> but you can continue on. And the biggest thing in the fear zone was I panic and buy more than I need. Let's not even talk about the toilet paper pandemic. The food, eggs was missing, bread was out. Everybody panicked. It's now gotten to the point we have to have signs because nobody practices self-control when you're in the fear zone. So moving on is our hope that after the fear zone, you should be in the learning zone, if not already in the growth zone. So the learning zone consists of things such as I am making healthier choices of both my physical and mental health. Have you came to terms that we might be in here a lot longer than what they anticipated? Are you starting to see your physical change as well as your emotional change that needs to be readjusted during this time? I plan my days and manage and make the most time of my life. Are you setting goals? Are you waking up even if you're not able to go to work to find something to do? Make time for whatever it is that you need to do. If you have a purpose to wake up, you will have a purpose to get up. I recognize my fear zone behaviors. Now that you have went past the fear zone, you should recognize when you start panicking again or feeling like you're overwhelmed. Remember how you felt when you first found out about COVID. Try to remember your behaviors because it will help you stop and realize I'm about to revert back into the fear zone.
I start to accept what is outside of my control. In the learning zone, this is most important. You have to realize that some things you were not able to control, but you can control how you react to the situation and how you control your emotions during it. So basically, I recognize we're all in this together. You are not the only one. So in the fear zone, many people continue to focus on I, I, I. Now in the learning zone, you realize everyone else is suffering. Everyone else has the same fears. Your problems is no greater than anyone else. And then finally, you are looking for opportunities to seek progress. Even by watching this and learning, is you're in the learning zone whether you realize it or not. You're trying to find a way out. You're trying to find coping skills. You are trying to get information to make you do better and be better. Once you have graduated in the learning zone, some of us, but not all, we are in the growth zone. You know you're in the growth zone is the action zone. This is you actually doing what you said you were gonna set out to do. It's also the action zone of what you learn you're actually imp implementing. You will practice your coping skills in the, in the growth zone. You are aware what is against you and still plan ahead. You move forward and you execute your plan. You look for new ways to adapt if the old ones no longer work. So sometimes it would take different things in order for you not to quit. You will have to learn how to do things differently. In the zone, you see I look for opportunities to help others. The fear zone will cause you to only think of yourself, but you know that the growth zone, that you're in the growth zone where you start thinking of others and what you can do for others. I focus on doing the next right thing. You want things to go well. You focus on what should I do correctly and properly. You think before you jump into other actions. Most importantly, you're appreciative and you're grateful. You can always find something out of the mess that we were in. You're appreciative of your life. You're grateful for your family. You find things that you still look forward to and feel blessed in. I limit social media and spend quality time with family. In the growth zone, you need to realize what your triggers are. If you find Facebook, Instagram, or posts upsetting, if you're at night tweeting and going off, if you feel like you cannot go to sleep after watching the news, it is time to detach from social media. Focus more on what's important, your peace of mind and your family. And lastly, in the growth zone, I accept that this is life and I choose to be present. Please do not check out because it hasn't went the way we think it has. Next slide. So another um, zone that I chose to put in is post-traumatic growth. Post-traumatic growth is a positive aspect in behavior after surviving traumatic experience. And it's referred to as post-traumatic growth. PTG. This will allow one to involve and maintain the growth zone. Um, who I think of most during post-traumatic growth would be Job, if we had to refer to someone. All that he endured, at the end of the day, he still loved the Lord, he still was grateful, and he still became a new person and realized that he appreciated everything even more so after loss. This is what post-traumatic growth does to you. You come out of it a better person with a new perspective. There is an opposite spectrum to this because not everyone has post-traumatic growth. The negative aspect of the behavior causes you to be stuck. And stuck is reliving the same things, thinking back to the old ways, staying in the same mindset and position since COVID. Waiting for the old way to come back is opposite of what post-traumatic growth is. So there's two things you need to ask yourself during this time. Will you become bitter or better during this radical change? And that is up to you to answer. Did you maintain gratitude or attitude during your process? Know your position. Next slide. So this is the breakdown towards change. There are stages of behavior change. So if you notice at the bottom of the steps, this is the pre-contemplation stage. Often this is the denial stage. These are where unmotivated people who see no need to find a solution to the problem. 
They don't believe it exists. Those are, I don't think COVID is real. Those are, that's your problem, not mine. I don't need to change, you do. They're not even acknowledging that perhaps they need to change. My favorite, there is no racism anymore because I haven't experienced it. You're just looking for it. These are pre-contemplation stages. These are the hardest people to convince because they don't even think there's a problem to the situation. As you move on up to behavior changes, you have contemplation. So now the person is aware of the problem and it exists and starts to think about overcoming it, but have not yet committed to take actions. I call these the wishy-washers. Example, if you're a diabetic and you want to improve your blood sugar, but you haven't yet cut back the sweets or the carbs yet. You're thinking about it, you're talking about it, but you have not had any action to show that you're, a, you're ready for that change. You're still in the contemplation stage. As you climb on, you can go into preparation stage. This is the planning stage. This is better than the first two, but we're not quite there yet. You're halfway there. You're gathering information in the stage. You're trying to get information to know what you need to do. It is according to Perkloski, 50% of people who attempt behavior change would skip this step and relapse in 21 days. From what I'm taking it, the planning stage, because it's more time consuming and you have to write it down, which means it's making you accountable. You cannot wing it and you cannot have a clear written plan now to change the behavior. As, as it's stated, write the vision, make it plain. Preparation stage is write the vision, make it plain. Now we're almost at the top of the stairs. It is a lot of stages, but it's worth the climb. This is the action stage. This is the stage where people modify their behavior. You're actually changing it. And it, it's changed through their experiences, environments, in order to overcome their problems. This is the age that requires the most energy and the most commitment. You are doing what you plan on doing in the preparation stage. You are, so if it's buying a house, you are meeting the realtors. If you want to go back to school, you actually put in the application. If you wish to vote this year, you actually register to vote. You are taking the actions to doing these things for a better change. Once you have completed the action, you are now finished, but there's called maintenance. There's no ending to change. You have to maintain what you have accomplished and achieved. The maintenance stage is where people work to prevent relapse and maintain their progress, their peace, their weight loss, whatever it is that you decided that you wanted to change. And this is how coping skills and strategies are very essential for the survival to stay within the maintenance stage. Now this will usually last six months to indefinitely depending on the person's mindset and how strongly they wish to stay in that change in state. Next slide. So negative coping skills while dealing with change. This is one where I don't have to teach anybody how to be negative. They come to me because they can list every negative thing they have done. But just for humor, these are some of the negative coping skills that most people will do because we're naturally in the flesh. It's very easy to do these things than to break it. This includes abusing drugs and alcohol, excessive smoking of cigarettes or marijuana, Refusing to help others is a negative coping skills because by helping others, you're helping yourself. Gambling, procrastination, poor hygiene. You're realizing just because you're not going anywhere, you start to decline on your appearance and your looks. Stubbornness and inflexibility is a negative coping skill. If you're not willing to change, there's, there's nothing nobody can really do for you until you realize it. Denying any problems, if you're fighting, criticizing others for what they're trying to do, for what they're trying to accomplish, but you're going nowhere, gossiping and manipulating people is a negative coping skills. Negative talk. Negative talk is talking down to yourself. This is all internally, and this is what you perceive of yourself. I can't do anything right. Always assume the worst, blames everyone, or blames themselves is negative talk. 
And of course, what most people try to do, sleep their life away. Because things are not moving according to plan. You just want to sleep it away and hopefully one day you wake up and it has all changed. So tonight where it's most important is the positive coping skills. Next slide. And this is what I teach or try to give a list of for, for people who are in need of trying to figure out this is not going away. Well, what can I do though to occupy my time? So this is a couple of lists of things. The first one is start your journal. Start processing, start thinking about it. You, it's more therapeutic for yourself, but there was a little diary called Anne Frank, and this 12-year-old Dutch girl who was hiding for two years with her family during the Holocaust. She didn't write this thinking she was gonna have one of the best-selling books in the world. All she did was record her life daily. You never know what comes out of this. It helped millions and billions of people understand what was happening when it occurred. This is the time if you feel the need to document each and every day of what's going on. That was her coping skill, not even knowing that that's how she coped in order to get through the day. Gardening is very holistic. Gardening is one with the earth, you relax, you don't, it's perfect for social distancing. You can create whatever you want with gardening. You maybe need to learn how to do it yourself, DIY. The website Pinterest shows you how to do things. It's amazing how many people have created and built things for their homes, uh, design. You don't know how well you're at a, at a talent until you try something. Take an online computer class. A lot of people are complaining because we're technology. There's a lot of classes that you can take and you can actually learn how to use the computer. You have nothing but time but to learn something. Or maybe you enjoy reading but you miss socialization. Start an online or telephone book club. That way you get with your friends, you pick a, a book of the choice, and you guys are able to interact online or on the phone about what you read. You can also do free online workouts. That has been really boosted. YouTube has free online workouts. You can type any body part to work out and it's free. The um, Durham Parks and Rec actually has free workouts. If you type in Durham's Parks and Rec in YouTube, they have work free workout, chair exercises, and different exercises. Painting and art is good. Volunteer in your community, giving back to others. There's websites, and I can also email you all this in details, of, of a website where you look up the zip code and you can decide which organization is in need and sign up to do that. Home improvements, all those procrastination on what you should have done, repaint something, rebuild something, redesign a room, start small by piece by piece. I did it, I went to Ross, I went to Marshalls, and piece by piece the room was completed. You don't have to have a big budget, you, we got nothing but time in order to complete. Send care packages. If you're concerned with the elderly, the troops are still overseas, or even children in the neighborhood, you can do things like that and send them care packages as a mean of you haven't forgotten about them. You have something on your mind. This is a productive way of showing love without uh, contact. Outdoor activities are very popular. In parentheses, I have Return to Play. This is actually a website where if you wish to see it, what it does is give you risk management. So it will say biking and over there has low, medium, and high risk. So it lets you know if you decide to go with a group of friends cycling, it's probably considered high depending on how many people. But then you can also click low, you're cycling by yourself, you're cycling outdoors. It has bowling. Bowling is actually considered a high risk activity for contact. So online it tells you why. Because bowling is indoor, it makes it a high risk. You're touching things, you have to exchange the balls. So all this is actually leveled up to be higher than cycling. So if you are interested in that, I can also send you that where it tells you the outdoor activities and the level of risk you might have if you do it, just for a peace of mind. You can also contact through, and this is some of the apps I have used, Zoom for group chats, WebEx, FaceTime, and Duo. These apps are wonderful for um, visual contact. FaceTime is for 
um, Apple, but Duo actually accepts Apple's and Android apps. And that makes it great when you have a lot of family members, such as myself, that we're all able to use that same app. Um, so there's different apps that can actually be compatible with both phones without stressing out. And what about starting your own business or buying a house? Always remember, you have time. There's plenty of time to fill your life with goals and dreams. Next slide. So we have a continuation of positive coping skills. So I'm giving you a lot to think about. Um, Self-care. Self-care encourages you to maintain a healthy relationship with yourself by providing techniques to improve emotionally, mental, physical, and, psych and psychosocial well-being. Take that vacation time. Why have you been working your whole life and haven't taken any vacation? You have to realize vacation doesn't mean traveling. It means taking a break, stepping away from your work. Get your manicure, um, a manicure and pedicure. If you still are not comfortable with doing it in the salons, do it yourself. Again, YouTube and Pinterest tells you step by step what to buy, how to do it. Turn off social media. That is self-care. If you have blocked so many friends that you no longer have half, that means it's time for you to take a break from social media. Go to the movies by yourself. And now that we can't go to the movies as much, rent the movie by yourself, sit at home, pop some popcorn, and make believe that you are with others. This is the time where adults need to have the children's imagination as the children do. Let's talk about practicing yoga and mindfulness. Now this is a great way because you maintain moment to moment awareness of your body, thoughts, feelings, surroundings. This provides a breathing technique to release tension and pain by these practices. I would say it's not a religion because we do offer yoga at the VA and I also do chair yoga myself, but a lot of Christians are kind of weary about yoga. So yoga, it does not mean you're worshiping the devil or anything because you're not chanting. Always ask what type of yoga before joining the class, though. There are m many types of yoga. So it's always important to ask what style yoga it is. Um, and yoga has actually propelled as an exercise for chronic pain and stress reliever, although it is originally from the Hindu country. Find a accountability partner or a buddy. This is vitally important. This is the person that makes sure you're doing well, that's calling, you guys are checking up on each other, making sure that you're doing what you said you were gonna do. The accountability partner is there for prayer. The accountability partner is there to make sure that you have not lost your mind and is always supportive of you. Learn to fish or go fishing. Many people have picked up fishing and Actually, you don't have to be a strong fisherman. You can actually get a day pass online, and it's about, I want to say $7, because I do it sometimes. You don't have to buy the $30 fee for the year. But learning how to fish is more for serenity and to be calm and peaceful. It's not about catching the fish. It's just being out there in nature and doing things safely. Clean and reorganize your space. A lot of time, frustration, and anger comes from an or unorganized space or a dirty house, as my mother always said. <laughs> You're not gonna be happy when you walk into a messy house. You're already in a bad mood. So walking into an atmosphere that clutter is everywhere, it's only gonna trigger you more. So start cleaning out things that you don't need. Reorganize, that way your physical flow is um, together with your mental flow. Set personal goals and careers. This is the time that you have time to reevaluate. What was it that I said I wanted to do? What is it that I always procrastinated to do? It is the time is now. It's a mixed blessing because things are getting cut. Price cut, interest rates are the lowest it's ever been. Almost everybody has a new car. <laughs> um, people are buying. If you're selling, you're double blessed because people are paying double for what for their trouble. This is the perfect opportunity to actually progress while the government is still being very gracious. Positive self-talk. We talked about negative self-talk. Positive self-talk is giving yourself passion and understanding of who you are and what you can be. You can tell yourself, I can do better next time. I own up to my mistakes. I will master this. 
I am beautifully and wonderfully made. If you believe in yourself, there's no one on this earth can tell you you cannot do anything. Taking a stroll in a park is just as relaxing. You do not have to be physically fit to walk in a park. It clears your mind. It puts you kind of in a mindfulness where the trees are out there, the wind's blowing, and you have a sense of peace. Sometimes you have to get out and walk just to get out the house. Find a purpose in it. Listening to inspirational music is always great. And this is the no judgment zone because inspirational music does not always necessarily mean gospel music. Some people interpret it different. I work with young veterans from OIF and OEF, and when I ask them what their inspirational song is, sometimes it is Tupac. And it's not because of all the cussing, it's the message behind it. Sometimes I am in the mood for Hezekiah Walker, but then sometimes Whitney Houston, I'm every woman, inspires me. So don't judge anybody based off their inspiration. If it's getting them up, out, about, and focus on the goals, let them play the song. Also try a new hairstyle, buy new clothes. You have to feel and look the way you want to. Even if you don't feel like it, never look the way you feel is what I, we've been taught. You're buying those clothes because once COVID is over, you're gonna wear it somewhere. Always act like we're getting out of this. And when I'm done, I'm gonna be ready. Some people might adopt a pet. Pets are great companion um, animals. But keep in mind, if you're not a pet person, but pre-COVID, you won't be during COVID. If you want to test it out, have somebody with the pet and, t you, and watch it for a day, just like a baby. Baby said it, pet said it, you would know. But they are great if you always thought about having a pet. Practice healthy eating habits. And also, this would go geared towards working out. And then take pictures, capture the moments. It's so important to be around friends and family, but take pictures of what's going on. It's not that you don't want to forget about what's going on, because if when we get out of this, you kind of want to have it for your generation to generation to say, I lived through this. This is what happened. Even bad memories are memories that need to be captured so we can always remember the way of the old, but we're moving forward. And most importantly, keep a sense of humor. If you are grumpy, and if you think everything is not funny because life is serious, you won't survive this, this stage of change. Send a funny meme. Tell a knock-knock joke. Watch comedy on Netflix. Make yourself laugh. Make others laugh. It helps. Next slide. So I say the most important for last, spiritual coping skills. And so this came to me, and this is important to feed your spiritual man as well. So the shepherd, the shepherd is Pastor Dickinson and other pastors. He feeds us with the word of God, sermons and classes. We are the sheep. The sheep is the congregation, the believers. But sometimes he's a man just like us with fears. He gets tired. He has family. And as sheep, it's our job that when the shepherd's not there, to graze into the fields ourselves. So graze is when a sheep feeds on grass covered by the land. And so I want you to see these coping skills as the grass in the land. And so that you'll be filled and not starving every time the shepherd comes. Are you that person that keep asking for more classes? We need to do more and more. Re-examine yourself. What are you doing throughout the week to help feed yourself? The way we are not always starving to re receive the word from the pastor, if you need to be filled completely every time, then grazing should be the best solution for you in order to maintain a full spiritual appetite and be filled. We do not have to wait for the shepherd to come in order to eat. So some of these coping skills are inspirational readings, scriptures of the day, praying daily, fasting, watching online sermons. Maybe you didn't tune in at 10 o'clock, but they replayed again on YouTube. And maybe sometimes you might feel like another pastor, Bishop Noah Jones, Pastor T.D. Jakes. That is okay, because throughout the day and the week, each day is harder. Each day you might need to listen to an online sermon every day before Wednesday comes. 
create a gratitude list. A gratitude list is something visual and tangible that you could have. Write down everything that you are thankful for. Some people rip it, the sh rip it up and actually put it into a vase or, or some type of box. And when you're feeling that attitude instead of gratitude coming on, you pull out the sheet and read something you're grateful for. This will help humble you. Download a gospel play playlist. I can honestly say there's enough gospel songs that you actually can work out to. Ty Tribby keeps it crump. So if I feel like Jesus doing my walks, and I just, but I want it a little faster, Ty Tribby, all of his is, is great. Um, if you need that, zone out the world. Even at work, it's hard. And then you feel like that, that mood is coming on, click on your playlist, put your headphones on, and, and go there. Create a plan on the Babel app. Most Babel apps on the phone now have their own plans and it actually alerts you when it's time to read. Just sign up for it. It definitely alerts you when it's time to read. And then there's also Calm Mindfulness Journal, which I also have a copy of. And this is each day of the week and it tells you what you're grateful for, how you're feeling, what do you want to do today? And you actually write it down. I have, like I said, I have copies of that. If you want to see it, you know, let me know. And also schedule time to sit outside and talk to God. You can make a date with God just as you can make a date with somebody talking on the telephone or having lunch. Maybe you're like me and after work, it's five o'clock. So you say six o'clock before I eat. I usually um, go in at seven. Maybe from six to seven, I sit outside and talk to God. You give God time. He's not mad at if you got to pencil him in. He's just happy that you actually thought of him to have him on your schedule. These are all great spiritual coping skills. Next slide. So although all those are great coping skills, some things spiritually cannot help because there's mental health and there's chemical imbalance and different things like that, that you may need actual earthly help from trained professionals. So some of these are crisis line information. So the first one you see is disaster distress helpline. And this provides immediate counseling to anyone who's seeking help in coping with mental and emotional effects caused by developments related to COVID and national disasters. They are operating 24-7, seven days a week. The National Suicide Prevention provides free confidential support for people in distress, prevention, and crisis resources for you or your loved ones. If you feel that you cannot talk to someone you know, this is anonymous and you can also call them to talk to them as well. In the time of COVID, you might be stuck with your abuser. The National Dom Domestic Violence Hotline helps victims and survivors of domestic violence. They seek resources and information on how to give you help. National Child Abuse Hotline, and now this may not pertain to your child, but you might know someone who is, has child abuse or you have questions, a neighbor or a friend, you can also call them it offers crisis intervention, information, and referrals to thousands of emergency social service and support resources. All calls are confidential. The National Sexual Assault Hotline is confidential and you will be with trained support specialists receiving referrals for long-term support. Talk to someone about what has happened, but there's not actually any information such as location or even your identity. Conversations are not recorded or saved. Another good resource is the Elderly Care Locator. This is a free national service of administration on aging that provides an instant connection to resources that enable older persons to live independently in their communities and offer support for caregivers. Next slide. And for my veterans, you have veterans Crisis line, if you don't feel comfortable to go into the VA, this is free confidential support for all veterans, service members, and their family. It connects you to qualified respondents with the Department of Veterans Affairs, many being veterans themselves to help you talk out your crisis. 
We also have phone alcohol anonymous meetings, and this is taking place every week. And the meetings are free of charge and to attend over the phone. They also have local ones and virtual ones, and I have the website for those where you can look up the zip code. If you don't feel comfortable or judged by the Durham zip code, you can put in any zip code and it lets you know what meeting. So if you're willing to drive an hour or two just to avoid running into someone, please do. The Substance Abuse and Mental Health Service Administration. This is for individuals and family members facing mental and substance abuse disorder. This service provides referrals to local treatment facilities, support groups, and community-based organizations. Callers can order free publication, which is information and brochures. So if you don't feel like sitting through the groups, you can just ask, can you give me some handouts and, so, and I'll read over it. No counseling will be provided during this time, but a trained information specialist. So this is great if you just want to get a jump start on information, but it's not a counseling service like some other ones. Virtual Narcotics Anonymous. This is for drugs or other substance abuse, particularly addictive drugs that reduces pain such as opioids, qualifies as well as illegal drugs such as cocaine, crack, or heroin. Means are held online or by the phone. This is also works very similar to AAA, where when you go on the website, you can log into your zip code and it lets you know which meetings are virtual, which ones are over the phone, and which ones are cl closed during COVID. And let's not forget the national eating disorder. Remember when I said that some signs of depression and stress is weight loss, excessive gain? Well, eating disorder is also triggered during this time. It supports individuals and families affected by eating disorders and serves as a prevention, cure, and access of free to low-cost care. These are examples of anorexia or bulimia. Both are strongly suggested and associated with depression, anxiety, guilt, and shame. And finally, Core Recovery Direct Admissions Line. This is a mental health care and treatment center providing individuals with assessment, education, and treatment of drug and alcohol abuse, as well as other mental health conditions for adults and teens. They also offer intensive outpatient and family and couples counseling. Next slide. So now that I gave you a lot of coping skills or ideas, this sheet is called Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. And I have this and I usually give this to veterans to kind of write down and realize what the information I gave them to transfer so you can actually implement it into your life. So stressors come in all sizes and forms. Some are major, but many are everyday hassle. So to the left, I, I made a double table and I actually used my real examples um, so you can understand the blank part will be what you will fill out. And so you can recognize a hassle or experience. So I started with the small stuff. So to me, the small stuff, but it just, it's one of my pet peeves, is shoes are being left in the front of the door without putting them away. So you put your situation in there, something that's a pet peeve. My reaction, this is the truth. So you have to be truthful in order for this to really apply. So my reaction is anger, frustration, annoyed, throw the shoes outside. So you should know what levels, I really do. Um, and then on the other column, possible coping skills. So what we're trying to do is some of the coping skills I showed you, you're gonna substitute, what can I do to avoid the, re the negative reaction? So I wrote down, ask the person to place the shoes in a better spot without anger. Once I unwind, decide to discuss the shoes and the rules. And then maybe a third solution, clean and reorganize the space. Maybe the shoe rack is placed somewhere where they don't see and they walk past it. It could be, but this is problem solving. So you're writing down what, what coping skills can make this for me not being so stressed out and causing so much chaos. So it elevates to Hassle experience. Coworkers cut you off during a meeting. We all have that coworker. You already know they're coming. Every week you meet. So my initial reaction, anger, bitterness, cuss them out, walk out of the meeting. 
so you know what your reaction may be. But possible coping skills, positive coping skills is taking a deep breath and let the anger pass. That is part of the reason for yoga, meditation, mindfulness. It teaches you to be aware of your body senses and to release that. Try to redirect the conversation back to what you were saying. Listen to inspirational music before the meeting. This actually works. Um, usually you know what the meeting is going to be discussing. You already know who the person is going to be. You already know you, you're going to be 38 hot. So before the 12 o'clock meeting, you say, you know what? I need to put my headphones on. I need a little online sermon or I need my inspirational music or gospel playlist because it will decrease your anxiety and your anger. So if you're at a four for the meeting, you're not going to jump to a 10 so quick. But if you don't do any of that, you're already at 10 security, you know? So you have to know and your triggers and what, how to respond to things. Um, the last hassle or stress, of course, many parents felt this, school opening online classes, but I still have to go to work in person. So my initial reaction was anxiety, worry, call out of work because I'm too mad to talk about it, and eat. Those were my negative coping skills and reactions. So what possible coping skills happen? Keep, you can keep an open communication with your supervisor. Ask to meet one-on-one. -on -one. You'd be surprised, supervisors are actually a lot better one-on-one -on -one than open. So just ask to speak to them. Be humble. Keep your emotions in check when you're speaking to them. Because sometimes your emotions will meet the person before you walk in the door. Try to utilize some of these coping skills learned tonight to de-escalate and reevaluate the situation. You can also call your accountability partner. If you're frustrated, you want to vent. That's what the accountability partner is for. Help you problem solve, encourage you, pray, and also review my gratitude list because I'm quite sure the gratitude list had, I still have a job. Next slide. So dealing with the present moment, I like this quote, your anxiety doesn't come from thinking about the future, but from wanting to control it. And keep that in mind. Are you really upset about the future? No. Most people want to know what is going to happen, when it's going to happen, and if they can't get that answer, the anxiety occurs. But as you see in small quotations, you can go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 through 34. Next slide. And so everyone knows the serenity prayer of change. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. But I chose a prayer that I felt that applied to this. And that's the prayer for a new normal. Because remember, we're in the growth zone now. We're in the action, action stage now. No longer are we in denial. No longer are we wishing that things would come back. So this is by the Combat Trauma Healing Manual by the author Chris. And his goes, Father, it saddens me that I cannot return to normal. But with your help, I know that I can make the new journey into the new normal. Help me see the steps I need to take. Help me recognize the bridge you have sent to walk through these difficult times. Keep my eyes on you and not on the storm that surrounds me. Give me frequent vision where you are taking me and how I can face my fears with you alongside of me. Bring me to a place where I can minister to the needs of others. Use me in ways that are either common or unique, as long as it will serve those who are hurting. Build up your kingdom and add to the progress of my own healing. I know that it can be accomplished. I ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. Making the acceptance of adjustment. Next slide. So that's all I have, but I want to thank you guys for tonight. If you need information, if you saw something that caught your eye, and maybe you want to follow up, because I have a government email and I don't need to have that cluttered. Oh, this is one of my uh, personal emails where you can be in contact with me for uh, more information uh, at tiff1505 at hotmail.com.
first I want first I want to say thank you for the information and for those of us are here we're gonna give you a hand and we want to thank you. <laughs> You're we welcome. To, amen. I want to thank you for your using your gifts, your talents that God has blessed you with and mm -hmm. uh, your experiences experiences and so we thank you so much for the presentation and we, mm -hmm. mom we thank you for coming. Tiffany, we thank you. Thank you. Uh, and I'm just, I'll say it again. I'm just so proud that you are a member <laughs> of Orange Grove. Amen. Amen. And then I mind sharing with us. I, I, can we go back to that prayer? Can yeah. you go back to that prayer, Brother Carl? I, I, I really love that prayer. Thank God so much for it. And then we're going to give you her email again. So um, I thank God for that. I want you to say that prayer again. You, you can say it better than I can say it. Prayer for the new normal. Father, it saddens me that I cannot return to normal. But with your help, I know that I can make the new journey into the new normal. Help me see the steps I need to take. Help me recognize the bridge you have sent to walk through these difficult times. Keep my, my, my eyes on you and not on the storm that surrounds me. Give me frequent vision where you are taking me. And how I can face my fears with you alongside of me. Bring me to a place where I can minister to the needs of others. Use me in ways that are either common or unique. As long as it will serve those who are hurting, build up your kingdom, and add to the progress of my own healing. I know that it can be accomplished. I ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Praise God. Boy. And our uh, brother Carlos, can you show that email again? Uh -huh. If you want the presentation, uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure it will help you. You have you have really really helped us tonight. We thank God so much for you. Amen. So we can, if you need the contact information, yeah, there it is. Um, and if you need more information, call the church, and we will do all we can. Again, thank you from the very depths of our hearts. Brenda, we thank you for being here. Brother Cos, we thank you. Mom, we thank you for being here. Our Cole, we thank you for being here. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we want to say thank you for this day. We thank you for the information that we have received, how we can cope in these changing times. We thank you, God, for Tiffany, who did not mind sharing with us that which she knows. And so, God, we ask you to bless her life in a most special way. Um, and we just ask your blessings upon her life. Blessings upon all those who listen tonight, and we pray that in these changing times, that something was said or done that would help all of us. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.